Hey everyone, I hope you're having a great day so far. Today during Children's Chat, I would like to read you a story from the Spark Story Bible. So if you have one of these, press pause and go get your Bible and turn to page eight. Adam and Eve. You can kind of see the pictures. After creating the whole world, God looked around and was very happy. It was an incredible world filled with wonderful animals, plants, and included two very special people, a man and a woman. God made a beautiful place for the man and woman to live, an amazing garden. God named the man Adam and the woman Eve. God said to Adam and Eve, I need someone to help me take care of this amazing world. Adam and Eve said, sure, we'd love to help you, God. Adam and Eve were happy to care for God's beautiful world. All around them was incredible creation. Together, they walked around the garden, amazed with what they saw. There were tall trees and short trees and fat trees and skinny trees. Wow, Eve, Adam said, look at this. There are flowers of every size and color. Amazing, Eve said to Adam. It's all so beautiful. There were still quiet blue pools and a rustling breeze that blew throughout the garden. Everywhere they looked, they saw an amazing world. When she looked at all of the animals God placed in the garden, the ones that fluttered through the sky, the ones that wiggled and squirmed across the ground, and the ones that frolicked and played across the land, Eve said, it's going to be hard to keep track of them all. Don't worry, Eve, Adam said. God asked me to give all the animals names to help us keep track and take care of them all. This is a toucan and chickadee and monkey and squirrel. This tall, tall creature is called giraffe. The silly one with a long nose, she will be an elephant. And this one who wags his tail will be dog. Adam said, look how he follows me wherever I go. God watched over Adam and Eve as Adam shared all the names of the animals while they played with them in the garden. God was happy to see that Adam and Eve were taking such good care of everything in creation. We're gonna keep going with the first sin. One of the animals that God created was very tricky, the serpent. The serpent was clever and sly and up to no good. Did God really say you can't eat the fruit from the trees in the garden? The serpent hissed softly to Eve. No, said Eve. God said we can eat fruit from any of the trees in the garden except for the tree in the middle of the garden. God said not to eat from that one, not to even touch it. The serpent smiled, a sneaky little smile. Ha, huh. God doesn't want you to eat fruit from that tree because if you do, you'll know everything. You'll be just like God. The serpent hissed this in his sly way. Eve looked at the tree in the middle. Hmm, the fruit sure looked good. <sighs> so she ate some. And she gave some to Adam too. As soon as they ate the fruit, everything changed. Adam and Eve became very embarrassed and shy. They sewed some leaves together, making some pretend clothes to try and cover up their bodies. They stood nervously behind some bushes. Then they heard God walking around in the garden. God called out to them, Yoo-hoo! Where are you? Adam and Eve hid. Hey, where did you go? called God. Adam peeked out from behind some vines. He said, I heard you and I was afraid. Why were you afraid, asked God. Well, I'm naked for one thing, said Adam, who was quite embarrassed. 
So I hid. I see, God replied. Who told you that you were naked? Adam said nothing. Did you eat fruit from the tree I told you not to eat from, asked God? Eve gave it, Eve gave it to me, Adam blurted out. The serpent made me, exclaimed Eve. He tricked me. God sighed. I told you not to eat from that tree. Because you have done what I told you not to do, life will be difficult for you now. You will have to leave this beautiful garden and work very hard to get the things that you need. Now you will know what it is to be unhappy and someday you will die. I made you from dust. When you die, you will become dust again. God made some real clothes for Adam and Eve and sent them out into the big world and God was with them everywhere they went. Wow. So um, Adam and Eve kind of got in trouble, huh? Do you have a cookie jar at your house? When I was growing up, we had a cookie jar and my mother would make cookies and keep them in the cookie jar. And whenever I wanted a cookie, it seemed like I wasn't allowed to have one because we were about to have dinner or I'd already had too many cookies or something like that. I was very tempted to open that cookie jar and just sneak one out. Very tempted. And I'll admit, I did do it sometimes. Does anybody know what that word temptation means? Temptation happens when something or someone makes you desire to do something that you're not supposed to do. Luckily, we have God reminding us how to do the right thing, especially if we do it through love, right? Because God is love. This story kind of reminds me of a song we would sing in school when I was growing up, Who Stole the Cookie from the Cookie Jar? Who stole the cookies from the cookie jar? Catherine stole the cookies from the cookie jar. Who, me? Yes, you. Not me. Then who? And then we'd pick somebody else. So it might be like, Oliver stole the cookies from the cookie jar. Julia stole the cookies from the cookie jar. And each time the kids would say that rhyme again. It must be the oldest game in the world. And it, it seems like it's kind of what happened in the Garden of Eden. You heard how beautiful it was. Adam and Eve could have anything except for the fruit from the one tree. And what did they do? They ate the fruit from the one tree. Then they blamed it on somebody else. So Adam blamed it on Eve. She gave it to me. And Eve blamed it on the serpent. He tricked me. But you know what? The only one who could make the choice to eat the fruit was Adam for himself and Eve for herself. That's like being responsible for your own actions. You can't blame your mistakes on someone else. It just doesn't work. Have you ever been blamed for someone else's mistake? That feels pretty awful, doesn't it? It really does. Have you ever done the right thing when it was really hard? I bet you have. Like, for instance, not stealing a cookie from the cookie jar, right? Well, God wanted Adam and Eve to do the right thing. God wants us to do the right thing too. And God helps us do the right thing. We have each other to guide each other. We have the Holy Spirit who we can ask for help. And of course we have forgiveness from Jesus which is so important because we will make mistakes. But God loved us so much, he sent his one and only son, and Jesus loved us so much, he gave his life for us. And the spirit loves us so much that it is with us always. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you that you help us do the right thing. Thank you for giving us the power to choose the right way. Please help us to do that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, guys, have a great week. Bye.